everyone welcome to the session so in this particular video we will talk about another searching algorithm so far we have discussed that what is linear search and we did a deep analysis on the complexity part as well right and we have seen that it usually took order of n time complexity in worst case scenario to go for a linear search based algorithm now in the in our next part we will talk about something called as binary search algorithm and as i told you this is one of the most important and very uh, you know interesting application of a searching algorithm and it's quite useful as well why because for sure it is giving us a very less time complexity as comparable to the linear search that we discussed uh, until now how is that so how inter internally this is working we will talk about that now binary search is usually an application of divide and conquer now don't get worried if you don't know what is this we will discuss in very much detail with a lot of applications of this uh, divide and conquer algorithms but as of now just try to i'll try to give you just brief brief overview for those students who are not already aware about this concept of divide and conquer it says that practically if suppose the problem is very big so what we are trying to do in this particular divide and conquer approach is that we are trying to divide our problem into sub problems and we are trying to conquering each sub problem pretty well and then we try to merge the solution this is the overall idea behind divide and conquer if you're not able to get an idea clear cut just wait uh, for few more sessions uh, after that you will see that there is a appropriate module with the name of a divide and conquer and there we are discussing a lot of applications and after discussing all those applications i believe that you all will get the expertise on this particular module as well but as to get a sense of this let's talk about binary search so it says that what we will try to do is that suppose you are having a elements so first of all this binary search says that i will only apply when you give me a sorted array so the very first thing which we have to keep in our head that whenever we are applying a binary search the array should be in a sorted array the array should be a sorted array it means that for example you are having something like this in increasing or decreasing fashion doesn't matter so here i am taking an example of increasing order array that i have for example i am having two i am having let me write somewhat bigger so that you guys will not face any issue 2 4 8 12 20 25 maybe 50 and 70 suppose these are the elements that we have in our array by default the index will start from 0 so it will go 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 7 so this is a array that i have right and these are the indexes that are given to us okay now suppose uh, first of all you can clearly observe here it's a sorted array suppose i want to look for a position uh, for an element 50 whose position is 6 so what i am saying is that i am searching for an element 50 here so how basically this binary search approach will work that's what we supposed to see here in this session so first of all what's a small problem here what should be the small problem in this particular scenario you can say that small problem is something when i am having only a single element because when i am having a single element in an array so at that point of time only one if condition is required for example if suppose i am saying that this is a array that you have which contains only 50 only single element is there now what you can do is that suppose you are looking for a 50 only so you will just have to apply only one condition that if the value which you are looking for and the value which is present in your array is equal equal to x there is no need even to apply any for loop here if yes you can simply return the value of i otherwise you can simply return the value as minus 1 because there is only one element which is present so there is only only one condition that we need to apply here that is pretty much fine but if suppose we are having 
more than one element, which is a practical scenario, right? We usually don't have a single element in an array. If we want to store any single element, then why there is a need for an array, right? Array basically stores multiple elements, right? Because if we are we want to store any multiple elements, it's not like that we will create other variables. It's like 50 elements, 50 different variables. No, at that point of time, only this array data structure need will come, right? So it means that when the problem is a big problem, means by saying that when the array size is quite big, at that point of time, what we will try to do using a binary search, we will try to find out first of all the middle value, middle index. So how basically we will be able to find out the middle index? We can take the, there are two ways. So first of all, i is the starting index that we have, which is zero in our question, in our example. And j is the ending index that we have, which is seven in our example. So one way to find out the middle value is we you can directly do what is the value of i, what is the value of j divided by 2 simply. This is how you will be able to find out that what is the mid value. For example, here you are saying 0 plus 7 divided by 2. So here it will take the lower bound and you will be able to get the value as 3. It means that this is the value which it is considering as a middle value. This is the very first step that you have to do. Another way to calculate the mid value is the same way, but the approach is different. I plus J minus I divided by two. Now the question is that which particular approach should we use this one or this one while evaluating the mid, even though you will get the same answer. So here also the value of I is zero. The value of J is seven, seven minus zero is seven divided by two it will be equals to three. But I would say the best approach is to go for this way. Why I am saying this? Because usually what happened is that it might be the case that the summation of i plus j is very much high, that it will cause a problem of overflow, right? At that point of time, this particular uh, way will be the cure. So by default, always make a habit to use this kind of approach to always evaluate any kind of a middle value. Now, once you will be able to calculate the middle value, what you can do is that, why it is called binary? Because here we are dividing our array into two halves. How is that so? Let's try to understand this now. So here, uh, if you will see, we are having, I'm writing it again, the array 2, 4, 8, 12, and then I'm having 20, 25, 50, and 70. 20, 25, 50, and 70. And the indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. This is the indexes that I have. Now here, the element that we are looking for is I think 50 only. Fine. So what I'm saying is that you need to evaluate what is the middle value that you have. So the middle value that you are getting is the 3, right? Now, what is the next task? The next task, the second step is to just do the comparisons now. Is the value of R of mid is equal equal to the value that we are looking for? Is this condition satisfied? Suppose you are looking for an element 12 only. At that point of time, for sure you will say that this condition will be satisfied and you can directly return the index which is mid, which is 3, right? But as of now, our question is not to get the index of the 12, but to get the index of the 50. Now, in this particular case, we came across two possibilities. Maybe you are looking for 50, or maybe you are looking for something called as 4. Means either you are looking for a value which is less than R mid, or you are looking for a value which is greater than R mid, because the array is already sorted, the array is already sorted. So either the element that you're looking for will be greater than the value of the R mid or the element that you're looking for is less than the R mid. Means are you looking for four or 50? Consider that the element that we are looking for, which is the value of R of mid is lesser than X. So the element, so this is the condition. So suppose we are looking for 50 and R of mid is giving the value as 12. 
this condition is satisfied right once this condition is satisfied at that point of time you need to see that now which side you should go can i divide my search space into two halves now so here the answer is yes the answer is yes why is that so because here the array is already sorted and i am looking for a element which is greater than the array mid it means that the element will be for sure present at the right side of the array mid so what we can do is that suppose here you are calling a function by the name of a binary search which is simply taking the value of an array which is simply taking the value of the value of i as 0 which is ta simply taking the value of j as 7 initially right and the element that you are looking for is x means your function which is the by the name of a binary search is taking the initial values as r the value of the i the value of the j and the value that you are looking for but now what you can do is that you can call a recursion now what is recursion recursion is simply calling the same function again inside the method definition but with different set of parameters so here what you are trying to do is that you are trying to call this binary search function again because you want to do the same task again but now not on the complete array which you initially passed as the main function but now you will change your method definition by saying you will pass the array you will say that now don't start with the value of i as 0 start with the value of i as mid plus 1 because i know that the 50 will be present towards the right side of the 12 50 should be present at the right side of the 12 because the elements that i am looking for is greater so here instead of passing the value as i we are passing something called as mid plus 1 and then we will go towards j and the value x will remain same so this is something where you can say you can call the recursion and you can do without recursion as well by simply changing changing the value of i as mid plus 1 or what you can do is that you can not call the recursion but you can change the value of i as mid plus 1 simply so this is a kind of a pseudo code which is applicable for all the programming languages which you want to solve which you want to use but here what i want to describe is the logic that what is the logic behind the binary search how internally it will work now this is the one scenario another scenario can be that the element that you are looking for is 4 it means that the element that you are looking for is lesser than the value of air mid means air mid is having a value of 12 but you are looking for 4 this condition will be true at that point of time again you are pretty sure because the element that you are looking for is less than the value of air mid i will go for the right, left side of the air mid it means now at this point of time which parameter you will change you will change the value of j which will become mid minus 1 because now you know that there is no need to traverse at the end of the array i should traverse until the value of the mid minus 1 so here what you will try to do is that if you want to use recursion then you need to call the same function again just like the way i did above where binary search here you are saying r here you are saying the value of i you are passing the value of mid minus 1 and the value of x or if you don't want to use any recursion you can simply say the value of j will become mid minus 1 and that's it that's it until or unless your value of i is less than the value of j and you are making a uh, these conditions if they're satisfying for sure you will be able to get the index if it's not satisfying at the very end once it will be able to traverse the complete array you can return minus 1 which indicates that the element is not at all present in an array but now here the one thing that you need to understand again this is something which is recursion calling the same function again but with different set of parameters now one thing one thing which you need to understand is that that at each and every time we are dividing our search space into two halves we are saying to our code that don't traverse complete array just like the linear search 
we are saying that either you should go towards left side of the array or you should go towards the right side of the array either you should you should go towards the left side of the mid or you should go towards the right side of the mid and accordingly we are solving our searching space and that's why i would say there is a need of a sorted array if suppose the array is not sorted then how my code will be able to decide that whether i should go towards left or right there is no way that's the only logic behind saying that there should be a sorted array whenever we are applying a binary search by saying that you need to understand logically why is that important why we are seeing that aspect that's the very important thing that you need to understand here there are a lot of interview questions which you can face on this concept this concept is pretty easy but they used to modify the questions a lot and obviously in this uh, in this course we will discuss each and every aspect of the interview based questions as well but before discussing those things it's a preliminary thing fundamental should be strong you should logically and as well as practically able to implement everything before we will move ahead towards the other part of our video i hope that i am making sense with the logic part that basically here the very first thing is we try to evaluate the value of the mid here i told you the two, two approaches and i am saying the second approach is the best one as comparable to the first i gave you the reason as well after that i talked about the logic where after evaluating the mid value we are just checking the three conditions is the value is equal to x is the value is less than the x is the value is greater than the x where x is the element that we are searching for now there are two ways to solve this particular problem either using recursion or without recursion even for every recursive code you have a iterative approach as well that's a very important thing to keep in your head so here when you are calling the same function again it means you are using the concept of recursion if you are just changing the parameters it means that you are doing a iterative approach here so that's the overall idea behind the binary search now i want to just uh, talk about the logic in this particular video because i want to give you the time in the next video we will talk about the recurrence relation for the same i know until so far we have only only discussed it how we can solve any recurrence relation and i remember that at that point of time i told you that when the time comes i will also show you that how we can form up any recurrence relation as well and now i think in the next video the time came up so now we will try to understand that how basically we can form up any recurrence relation once i will be able to show you that how recurrence relation will be formed up once i will be able to show you that what is the recurrence relation for this binary search i am expecting you all to give me the final big o time complexity which you all know we can do with the help of three methods substitution masters and recursive tree approach i hope that everyone remembers all those concepts pretty well because now in the upcoming videos there is a need of all those fundamentals which we have already covered up in our analysis module part right i hope everything is pretty much clear to everyone with this happening to all bye bye everyone see you soon in the next upcoming session